I'll give you an example of how the creative process or how things work for me. Change is something else I'll discuss in a moment, since I've been given such a generous amount of time with you. Uh, but I'd like to start with this part. I mentioned that a week from today we're going to open a hotel. That I, I bought this property five years ago this month, 60 months. For two and a half years, 30 months, myself and, and a small cadre of friends that work with me in design were at the Desert Inn Hotel, which was closed, which we closed. And six days a week, eight or nine hours a day, we worked with a felt tip pen and some scales trying to think up a better mousetrap. And it was agonizingly slow. I mean, there was Bellagio down the street, one of our own places. It was the first time I was competing with my own work. And, and we knew the strengths and we knew the weaknesses of Bellagio because we we'd created it. We do our own drawing in my company. We, we draw the buildings ourselves. And we uh, do the architecture in-house. And it, it was a very formidable thing to look at Bellagio and think, well, well, they don't need any more slot machines and hotel rooms in Las Vegas. Hell, there's over 100,000 of everything. One thing they're not short of here is rooms or gambling devices, restaurants or bars, or anything else for that matter. How in the world can anybody step up and do it again? Well, the answer to that question was simple enough. You can step up and do it again if you're going to take this to another place. If you're truly going to create something that is special, that people must see, well, then you're safe. Because no new hotel in Las Vegas that was fanciful and original has ever not been successful. Oh, the, the demand in Las Vegas is not perfectly elastic. No demand is perfectly elastic. But every new hotel, there doesn't seem to be a limit for the best of the new, the new, the new best thing, because all the pressure and the misery is felt lower down on the food chain in the older, less competitive properties, naturally. So the, the, the outfits that are doing the new stuff, they got a clear road ahead of them because the world doesn't have a better place to go and cavort than in crazy Las Vegas. So I knew and my friends knew that if we could find a better thing, that we would be safe. Now, saying it and doing it are two different things. So you look at this fabulous piece of property and you say, Whoa, a lot of land. 240 acres, paid a million and a half an acre, something like that. Now it's worth about 11. But didn't know where to start. So there we are. I'm in the same boat with all of you. You see things as they are, and you want to know where you're going. And how do you get there? Well, for me, the answer has been always to go back to simple things. So I ask first, who are the people that are coming? What do they want? Well, that was easy to say. People come to Las Vegas, and people, no matter what language they speak, like the, the, the composition of this audience, represent every ethnic and cultural background. They come from every continent. But the research shows that when that happens, they share one common goal, and that is to have an enriched and heightened emotional experience. They want to go away on vacation and, and do something they've never done before. They want a unique experience. That's what people say in various languages to one another. However, they don't really mean unique. Unique is to be strapped into a Saturn booster and rocker and shot into outer space. <laughs> and the only person that would really find that to be a kick in this room is probably Annabelle Bond, if she's here, because she climbs Mount Everest and does things like that. No, when people say unique, what they really mean is they want to do what they always do, but they want it better, richer, more intense, like fanciful shopping and great restaurants and unusual environments and good entertainment with a small e, which can mean anything from a hot bar to a big concert or performing arts presentation on a big stage. People are looking, you know, in great shopping. That's what they want, and they want to be treated specially. That's what people want. So it's no mystery as to what people want. And a hotel's a hotel, you know, like this one. They got rooms and suites and bars and restaurants, the spa, pool, shops. Hotel's a hotel. The comp composition of one is pat. It's the way you put them together to give that experience. So I'm looking at the Desert Inn property and the empty land and the old buildings that are standing there. And the point of my presentation today is going to be that whatever you're doing, first comes an idea, then comes stuff. First an idea and then a building. First an idea and then a program. First an idea and then any institution that has any lasting vitality. 
whether it's political, economic, or commercial, without an idea at its core, where the hell are we going? What, a, a pile of stuff? More restaurants, bars, slot machines, and uh, fast food joints? Meeting rooms? So what? Who cares? First an idea, then stuff. So I go looking for the idea. Because I figure, if I can get my feet on the ground with an idea, because you know, if you think it through, strong, powerful ideas are usually simple ones. You can get your arms around a simple idea. And if you can do that, the, 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 the energies and, 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 the, and the efforts of human beings are always slightly less than perfect. We strive towards a goal, but very rarely do we ever perfectly achieve it. But we can get our hands on an idea that's pristine. Ideas can be perfect. Execution is another story. That's where compromise sets in. But if you start with a strong enough idea, even if you're only 80% successful, you still got something. Start with an idea and you flounder eventually because there's no core. There's no chance for the whole to exceed the sum of the parts. And if we go back to my specialization, a resort's got to have a soul. It's got to have a presence. It can't be just a collection of stuff. There's got to be something bigger that holds it together. And so I'm thinking about this, and I'm looking at Bellagio, which was a, a first-class attempt on our part. And I loved it. it. A lot of wonderful things. I'm saying, where do you go from there? Well, the history of Las Vegas w was pretty simple. You could summarize it in a word. They were, uh, resorts were designed from the outside looking in. The audience was the strip. People went up and down the strip. They looked at the big signs, the fancy fronts, even the ones I built. Pirate ships that sink, volcanoes that erupt, fountains that dance to music. Those were tourist attractions that made people go in. And uh, if they liked it, they would uh, then begin to become a guest. Well, this time, I looked and I said, OK, here's the city full of excitement. And people come here with expectation of this. To the extent that you give them what they want, you're on your way. So I thought, I'm going to give an example. That, uh, we did this commercial that ran th th this winter. Uh, to try and get a little early buzz in the hotel. And it started in Super Bowl and went to the Final Four and the Academy Awards. And, and it, the commercial is me standing on the roof of this hotel, 630 feet in the air, while a helicopter takes a picture of me saying, this is, I'm Steve Wynn, this is my hotel. It's the first one I ever signed my name to. Very, very egocentric, <laughs> big deal to stride the building. Our legs, legs separated, hand on hip. First one I've ever signed my name to. So what? The only reason the commercial was worth a nickel is because as they went to the website and the telephone number, I say, can I get down now? <laughs> to show that I'm just another schmuck trying to sell something scared to death on top of the roof. That makes me like the people who are watching television. That's a good thing. That's what made the commercial worth. That, that was why you could buy it. That's why the commercial had any effectiveness. But the building has received a good deal of praise because it's this bronze, curving, arabesque. It's a 730-foot section of the circumference of a circle with a 700-foot radius. And it has an asymmetrical roof where the name of the hotel is signed there. Now, everybody likes the building. And the American Institute of Architecture is going to have their convention on May 14th in Las Vegas. And I'm, I got invited to speak because they think it's a pretty building. Well, that's very nice. So someone is going to build a curved bronze building again. We'll see more of them. But that's not how I got my building. I got my building because I was thinking about Las Vegas and the aspirations of the people that come there. That's where I was sitting there trying to dope it out. And I said to myself, I'm going to build a curve because a curve in architecture means movement. A curve is not a plan. If I was building an insurance company or a bank, I'd have something planted square with a big, strong base and a nice tapered top, something that looked like it couldn't be moved if there was a nine on the Richter scale earthquake. But when you're building a building in a city of expectation and excitement, movement is a good thing because it connotes those things of expectation and excitement. So I knew I was going to have a curved building because of the idea of a curve in the place that I was building it and for the purpose that the building was going to be created. And if you're going to have a curve, you want to accentuate that curve so you need horizontal stripes. And horizontal stripes that would reflect light at night 
so they were going to be light. And so for them to have any kind of definition, they'd have to be on dark background. So I went looking for a dark background. Black would be too stark. But bronze, an interesting deep shade of bronze would change with the different light that would come from the west and hit the building in the afternoon. So bronze glass came as a background to the white horizontal stripes, which were there to accentuate the curving movement of the building. And the asymmetrical roof came from the same idea, because by having a swoosh on the building wasn't a place to sign my name. It was a way of making the building's motion be accentuated, because a comet has a head that's larger than its tail as it streaks across the sky. So here comes a bronze glass building that's curved with white horizontal lines and an asymmetrical roof, all because of a simple idea having to do what the building was all about and where it was. How could I have started with a more simple fundamental idea to create the architecture of the building? First an idea and then the building.